All right, today what we're going to talk about is graphing the tangent and cotangent functions. Now we're going to use points around the unit circle. Now these points are going to be our 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and back at 2 pi. But before we talk about that and move on, we're going to use the unit circle. Where are the tangent functions undefined? Well, if tangent is sine over cosine, then that's everywhere cosine is going to be 0 because it makes the denominator 0. And using the unit circle to find the cotangent functions, well, cotangent is now going to be the reciprocal of the tangent function, so we'll have it cosine over sine. So now it's everywhere that the sine function is 0. Well, leading into that, let's see what happens. Now, filling out our table here and looking at the unit circle. Well, going around the unit circle, we'll have some radiant measures. We start at 0, then we move to pi over 2, 2 pi to 3 pi over 2, and then back to 2 pi. Now, all I'm going to do is copy those exact same radiant measures, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, when we look at these, remember, the tangent is sine over cosine. Now, your points, your cosine is the second point. Your sine is, your cosine is your kind of like your x, and your sine is kind of like your y. So over here, when we look at these for our fractions, if we take our sine, which would be 0, our cosine 1, our sine 1, cosine 0. At pi, we have 0 over negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, we'll have negative 1 over 0. And at 2 pi, we will have 0 over 1. Now, going through these, which one's going to give us the 0? Which one's going to give us undefined? Now, we can have 0 over 1, which gives us 0. We cannot have 1 over 0, because my analogy to that is, if I'm a stick figure of being 1, I cannot stand on top of a basketball without falling off. So if that happens, it'll be undefined. We'll have 0, and then at 3 pi over 2, I'm going to be standing on top of a basketball, I'm going to fall off, so I'm going to be undefined. And again, at 2 pi, I'll be at 0. Now the cotangent functions, remember, that's just going to be the reciprocal of the tangent. So for cotan, we're going to have cosine over sine this time. So all we've got to do is really look here at the tangent functions and just flip our fractions. So here I'll have 1 over 0. At pi over 2, I'll have 0 over 1. At pi, I'll have negative 1 over 0. At 3 pi over 2, I will have 0 over negative 1. And at 2 pi, I'll have 1 over 0. Now, going through here and making our undefined. I'm standing on top of a basketball, so I'll be undefined. I can put a basketball over my head just fine, so I'll be at 0. Undefined, 0, and undefined. Now, when we graph these functions, we've got to see what the undefined parts, they're going to make asymptotes on our graphs. And at the zero point, those are going to be points of inflection. Now, let's see what happens when we move on and we look at how to graph these. The first graph we're going to look at is graphing the tangent function. Now, we're going to take our period, if we're graphing the tangent function, remember that's the one here, and it's still going to be 2 pi divided by 1, which is going to give us 2 pi. Now, our amplitude is still that number in front of theta, which is 1. Now, the points where the taking the points, well, because our period is 2 pi, it'll be 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi because that gives us the period of 2 pi. So 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. 
Those are going to be my points from my starting point to my ending point of my period. Now our amplitude is 1, so we'll go up 1 and down 1. Now, if we look back and we think back to our paper, I'm going to switch slides and go back one. Now we're talking about the tangent function. So where on that tangent function were we undefined? On that tangent function, we're undefined and we're undefined. Well, what points were those? Well, that was pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, we were undefined. So that means we've got to make an asymptote there. Now, this function is not continuous because we can't run straight through that line. We can't do that. We can't run through our asymptote. So what we're going to have here is much what looks like the cubic functions. We're going to put a point on pi because remember that zero. We draw what looks like y equals x cubed. Well, at 2 pi, we're going to have the same thing. But if I was to draw this in, it would only be that part of it. And at 0, it would just be this part. Because on the next period, that part would go down. And moving over the next period, that part would go up. So that is how we graph the parent function of y equals tan theta. Now, let's look at the cotangent function. Now, the cotangent function, we want to look at the amplitude and our period first, and then we're going to look and see where is it undefined. So, our amplitude is still the number that's in front of that trig function that says cotan, so our amplitude is 1. Our period is still 2 pi divided by omega. Remember, omega is the number in front of theta, so that's still going to be 2 pi divided by 1, which just gives us 2 pi. So, Writing in our point, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi giving us our points from starting to finish of one period. Now, which points are undefined? Well, let's go back to our notes where we wrote in for the cotangent. Well, where are those points undefined? Those points are undefined at 0, at pi, and at 2 pi. So let's go back to our graph. So at 0, at pi, and at 2 pi, we're undefined. So that means we have to have an asymptote there. So let's draw in our asymptotes. Now, at pi over 2, the cotangent is 0. At 3 pi over 2, the cotangent is 0. This time, our graph is going to start on the left-hand side of our point at pi over 2. And the same thing is going to happen at 3 pi over 2. So that is what our parent function of y equals cotangent theta is going to look like. All right, now, how do we apply a vertical shift to a tangent function? Remember that vertical shift is going to be the number out here, out beyond where we'd have the parentheses that includes that theta and any phase shift. So all we're talking about here is a vertical shift. Now, our vertical shift is that number, and we take the sign with it, so that means our vertical shift is going to be up 3. Well, did our amplitude change? No, it's still a 1 out front. Our period is still a 1 with that theta, so it's going to be 2 pi. So let's make our points 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, what's going to change? Well, remember, we had our midline here where those points hit the midline to make our point of inflection, to make that little S curve. So because we have a vertical shift, we're going to take this green dotted line and go up 1, up 2, up to 3. Now, so we're going to take that line and go up to 3. Well, what were our points to make the tangent function 0 and make it undefined? Well, 
that was at pi halves and 3 pi over 2. That's where the function is undefined. So what we're going to have at both of those points still is we're going to have asymptotes. So we're going to have dotted lines. Now, our point at pi and our point at 2 pi and our point at 0, those are still going to exist. Those are our point of inflections where the graph is going to go through to make that tangent function. And that's how we make a vertical shift up. All right, let's look at a vertical shift, this time taking the cotangent function and making the vertical shift, ne shift negative. Now, when I take that vertical shift negative, it's going to be negative 2, so that means we're going to go down 2 this time. So what our vertical shift line that always starts there at the x-axis, it's going to go down 1 and down 2. So we'll be down at negative 2 for our vertical shift. Now, our amplitude is still 1. Our period is still going to be 2 pi divided by 1, which is 2 pi. So we're at 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, where is that cotangent function going to be undefined? Well, that cotangent function is undefined at 0, at pi, and at 2 pi. So that's where we have it undefined. So we've got to make sure that we have asymptotes at those spots. Now I'm going to take my asymptote here at pi and move it over so it's a little bit more accurate. At 2 pi, at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, I'm going to be touching. Now, normally I would be there, but because my midline moved down, I've got to move my points down to that midline. Now I can draw in my cotangent function, which starts on the left side of my point of, of inflection on each one and between my asymptotes. 